They took a laser beam and they put it through a beam splitter. So you have the same beam, but then it's split into two. Now then what they did was they weakly measured the photons in both beams. And then they subjected one of the beams to this a strong measurement, if you want to put it that way. And what they discovered was that back in time when they were weakly measured, the photons that got the later strong measurement had been amplified significantly. So that later measurement amplified the photons in their past. But it means that events in the future, at time point B, somehow affect things at time point A in the past. In other words, a future event altered something that had already happened. This isn't speculation. Experiments suggest it's happening all the time. Psychologists studying precognition found something strange. In controlled lab tests, people's bodies reacted to emotional events before they happened. The person sits in front of a monitor and is shown a series of photographs, not asked to do anything except look at the pictures. And the person is wired up to have the physiology measured. First ones were electrodermal response. Now it's been done with fMRIs, with pupil dilation, with heart rate, they all sort of have the same effect. So what you do is you just watch and the computer randomly selects a set of photographs to show you and most of them are calm, neutral pictures and every once in a while there's a an arousing picture, a negatively written arousing one in this case. So the results is that the physiology of the participant shows higher arousal, not just when the picture appears, which you would expect, but a few seconds before the computer shows the arousing pictures, that is the negative pictures or the erotic pictures, even before the computer decides which picture to show. It's called pre-sentiment, and it suggests our subconscious mind may be picking up signals from the future before our conscious mind realizes it. But this doesn't just happen in the lab. Many people experience precognitive dreams, where details from the dreams match real life Life events that happen days, weeks, or even years later. Eric Wargo believes that these dreams aren't coincidences, they're messages from your future self. The problem? We usually don't notice them until it's too late. But what if you could learn to recognize them? What if your dreams could help you predict your own future? And that's exactly what we're about to explore. Because the more you understand precognition, the more you'll realize time doesn't work the way we think it does. The thing that I want to emphasize is that from our work at SRI and the work at Princeton, most psychical researchers are now convinced that precognition is as strong and reliable a phenomenon as remote viewing into the distance. Your waking brain and your sleeping brain are entangled the same way as the brains of the twins. That's, that's my going in hypothesis now. One's brain in the present and one's brain at some future time. It, it makes sense that they would be entangled. Many people report dreaming of events before they happen, sometimes in striking detail. A conversation, a location, even a major world event. Days, weeks, or even years later, they find themselves living out a moment that already played out in their minds. But how is this possible? Eric Wargo suggests that dreams are a form of communication across time, your future self sending information backward. The problem is, we don't recognize it when it happens. Dreams often feel strange and symbolic, not literal. But when we look back, we see connections that weren't obvious at the time. And this is where it gets even more fascinating. Psychologists studying dream patterns have found that people can train themselves to notice precognitive elements, to recognize which dreams are echoes of the future rather than random imagination. What if you could train your mind to recognize these signals in real time instead of only after the event has already happened? Most people have had precognitive dreams. In fact, most people's first contact with psychic abilities is a precognitive dream. But if you're going to use a precognitive dream, you have to be able to get rid of your anxiety dreams, your wish fulfillment dreams, your dreams cluttered up from the previous day's residue, and look for dreams which are unique characterization, very crisp, very unusual, bizarre. So if you're having a dream that's very startling, but basically, if you dream about failing a math test and you haven't studied the math test, we would not consider that precognitive. One of the most famous cases of precognitive dreams involved Abraham Lincoln. Historians say that Lincoln dreamed of his own assassination days before it happened. In his dream, he saw a funeral in the White House and asked who had died. The response? The President. Days later, he was shot at Ford's Theatre. 
And Lincoln wasn't alone. Reports of precognitive dreams exist throughout history, sometimes warning individuals of personal events, other times foreseeing global tragedies. But is there a way to prove the dreams predict the future, rather than being coincidences we notice after the fact? That's exactly what J.W. Dunn attempted to do with his precognitive dream protocol, a system designed to prove the dreams don't just reflect the past, they reveal the future. So J.W. Dunn, he came up with a call. protocol. protocol right. yeah. So you could have precognitive dreams right now. Now, not all dreams are precognitive, though. Well, let's talk about that. Okay. He came up with a protocol not to have precognitive dreams, but to notice you're dreaming throughout the night, not just in the REM sleep periods, but even in the deeper uh, non-REM sleep periods, you are, you are dreaming. Dunn's argument was that, well, dreams are uh, reaching into the future reaching into our future as well as into our past. J.W. Dunn, a British aeronautical engineer, didn't just experience precognitive dreams. He decided to track them. In the early 20th century, he developed a method to scientifically test whether dreams could reveal the future. His method was simple. Every morning, he wrote down his dreams in as much detail as possible. Then he compared them to real events in the following days and weeks. And the results? He found that many of his dreams contained accurate details about future events, not just personal experiences, but news stories and events he had no way of knowing beforehand. More importantly, he noticed a pattern. The future events in his dreams were often mundane, everyday occurrences, not dramatic premonitions of disasters, but moments that would otherwise go unnoticed. This led Dunn to propose something radical. We all have precognitive dreams, we just don't realize it because we forget or misinterpret them. To test this idea, Dunn encouraged others to keep detailed dream journals. Many reported the same experience. Dreams that didn't seem significant at the time turned out to match future events. And here's where it gets even stranger. Dunn believed that our dreams mix past and future events together, making them hard to recognize until after the fact. According to him, time isn't linear inside our minds. We are constantly processing information from both directions, past and future. But if dreams can show glimpses of the future, could this ability extend beyond sleep? Some researchers believe precognition doesn't just happen at night. It can happen while you're awake, in flashes of insight or spontaneous thoughts. Many people experience precognitive thoughts, gut feelings or mental images, flashes of insight that seem to come from nowhere. Have you ever had a sudden thought about someone only for them to call you minutes later? Or maybe an idea popped into your head and later that day it happened exactly as you imagined? I've had something like this happen to me like a week ago. Yeah. Craziest thing I've ever, let's yeah. like ever, I was telling everybody about it. My wife was like uh -huh. blown away. So there's a guy, one of my dad's close friends, he's been friends with for, th for 30 years. They work together at the post office. I've known this guy my whole life, right? It's one of my dad's close golf buddies. He's called me maybe four times in my whole life for various reasons. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Like maybe to you know borrow my golf clubs or something to go golfing with my dad, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Four times in the in the twenty five years I can remember knowing him, mm -hmm. I was driving home one day from from here from the studio, and I was thinking about something. And I for some reason I was thinking about people's reaction to something that I was going to do, right? And this guy's voice popped into my head, and I was thinking of how would this guy react to this? And I look, I I never really think about him either. Like he's not a guy he's I think about often. Mm -hmm. And I had his voice in my head, like imagining what his reaction would be. Three seconds later, he calls me. And I was just like in my pants. I was like, this is so crazy. And I was telling my wife, I'm like, I'm like have you ever had anything like this happen to you? Eric Borgo suggests that these experiences are not random. They are another form of precognition, just like dreams. The difference? They happen while we're awake. This concept raises a big question. Where do our thoughts come from? We assume they're the result of memory, imagination or logical reasoning, but what if some of our thoughts are influenced by future events before they happen? Most of the time, it's your own self. It's your future self. You are oh. tapping into things that are gonna happen in your future and that that's where your, your best ideas are coming from. They're coming from your future. Some researchers believe that our brains constantly process data from both past and future experiences. We just don't recognize the future ones until later. This would explain why so many inventors, writers, and scientists have reported receiving ideas in dreams or sudden bursts of inspiration as if the answer was already known just 
waiting to be noticed. But if some of our thoughts came from the future, can we learn to control this process? Can we train ourselves to access future information on demand? That's exactly what remote viewing and trained precognition aim to do. And for some, it's more than just theory. It's a skill that can be developed. People who are brand new to remote viewing in the class were blowing their own minds on how well they could see things they had no idea about. All they give you is a reference number. They give you a blank sheet of paper and they say, B43, go. That's it. Yeah. B43, it's what the that fucking mean? number on the envelope of the image that you're supposed to look into the envelope and see what's in there. Day one, week one at the Monroe Institute for Remote Viewing, you get an envelope with a photograph. You don't even get the envelope. You can't touch it. They've got a stack of envelopes up front. They say your name, and then they give you a reference number out of their stack of envelopes is up the, up the front. And so you get a, a letter and a number, or just sometimes a number, or just sometimes a couple of letters or whatever it is, and that's it. That's all you get. For decades, intelligence agencies and researchers have experimented with remote viewing, the ability to perceive distant locations or events without physical contact. Some believe this technique isn't just about seeing places far away, it's about accessing information from the future. But how does it work? Remote viewing programs, including those run by the US government, used highly structured protocols to test whether individuals could retrieve unknown information. Participants were given random coordinates and asked to describe what they saw in their minds, locations, objects, or even people. And the results? Some remote viewers described accurate details about places they they had never visited. But here's where it gets even stranger. In some cases, they described places before they had even been built. Their minds weren't just accessing distant locations, they were accessing events that hadn't happened yet. I wanted to refer to the work at Princeton that you alluded to before we began the program, where they did a lot of remote viewing exercises, experiments, and determined that the precognitive remote viewing worked just as well as real time. They published on one piece of paper all the data for 334 trials over a period of 20 years, significant at 10 to minus 11th, and the looking into the future is no more difficult than looking into the distance. And this leads to an even bigger question. If people can access information from the future, what does this mean for free will? Because if the future is already influencing our thoughts, do we truly have control over our choices? Or are we just following a script that has already been written. Most of us believe we make choices in the moment, shaping our future as we go. But what if our decisions are influenced by events that haven't happened yet? If we can dream about the future, if we can have thoughts that later turn out to be true, then are we really in control? This is where the concept of retrocausality comes in. The idea that future events can affect past decisions. This guy named Benjamin Labette, a neuroscientist, you may have heard of him. Uh, he performed some really fascinating experiments that were really troubling for people because they showed that our nerves would initiate an action like a half second before we were consciously aware of it, okay? Whoa. Right, which you can interpret that in multiple ways. Uh, and the way that a lot of people interpreted it was that, well, free will is just a complete mirage and we don't exert, you know, the sense that we have of being consciously in control of our lives is completely a mirage. Another way of looking at it is that we are controlling our lives, but from the future. If information can flow backward in time, then maybe free will is just an illusion. Our choices already influenced by events ahead. Eric Wargo suggests that our minds are constantly exchanging information with the future, but because we experience time in a linear way, we don't realize it. It's a strange idea, but not the only one. Numerology is another fascinating example. How numbers like your birth date and even your name can be decoded to reveal hidden patterns in your life and offer insight into your path. It's truly profound. I even tried a numerology reading on this website and it honestly blew my mind. I was skeptical at first, but it was surprisingly accurate. Anyway, if you're interested, check out the link in the description and see for yourself. It's free. But back to what Eric suggests. Does this mean we're just following a pre-written script? Not necessarily. Some physicists argue that the future isn't fixed, it's a web of possibilities. While we may receive glimpses of what's ahead, our choices still determine which version of the future becomes real. In other words, precognition doesn't remove free will, 
it just expands it. If we can recognize future influences before they fully manifest, we might be able to change our path. And if our awareness of time is more flexible than we think, could we go beyond just glimpsing the future? Lucid dreaming. The ability to realize you're dreaming while still asleep has fascinated scientists and mystics alike. And in the 70s, somebody said, wait a second, you're a lucid dreamer. You're telling me you, you can become aware while you're in a dream, while the dream is happening? And so they did a couple of things. They trained the person that rapid eye movement, which is like skittish eye movements when we sleep and dream. They said, if you're in a lucid dream and consciousness has returned, can you communicate with me like with your eyeballs through like a Morse code? They left, right, left, right. They trained these like eye pattern movements. At the same time, they put the electrodes on the surface of the scalp because a guy like me will be like, he's just woke up, right? Like, well, I need to know more than that. And they prove by the electricity that the person is truly asleep. So you can't fake being asleep. No. A across a glass, this person at a certain time in the middle of the night, proving they're asleep, starts to communicate with their eyeballs. And it still shows you're asleep. Communicating with the outside world when you're asleep, that's powerful. That's lucid dreaming. What if lucid dreaming allows us to tap into the same precognitive abilities we experience in normal dreams, but with control? Eric Wargo and other researchers suggest that in a lucid state, the mind may be more sensitive to future influences, allowing people to access precognitive insights in real time. Some lucid dreamers claim to have received clear knowledge of future events while consciously navigating their dreams. Others report experiencing what feels like out-of-body travel, perceiving places and events far beyond their own knowledge. This is where astral projection comes in. Some believe that astral projection, often described as the sensation of leaving one's body, isn't just an illusion, but a real phenomenon tied to non-linear time perception. Could these states allow people to access information across time and space? Reports from practitioners suggest that during deep meditative or dream states, they've encountered detailed scenes of future events, later confirming their accuracy. While mainstream science remains skeptical, the fact remains. Many people who experience lucid dreams and astral projections report gaining knowledge that shouldn't be accessible. So if consciousness isn't confined to the present moment, where does it actually exist? Perhaps the biggest mystery isn't whether we can glimpse the future, but whether our awareness itself exists outside of time. And if that's true, then everything we know about reality is just the beginning. If the future is already influencing the present, what does that mean for you? Have you ever had a dream or thought that later came true? Drop a comment and share your experience. If this video made you rethink what's possible, share it with someone who needs to hear this. Want to go deeper? Make sure to subscribe, because this is just the beginning. See you in the next one.